I came back, going back to Iran via London. And then uh, the next day I was arrested, I was picked up at home. 16, 16 men just stormed the house and I was mm, charged under Section 508 cooperation with the hostile states of America, which was really shocking and it was just like America and then hostile states. That, that was something that I wasn't really expecting. Uh, a week before that, Iranian tanker was stopped by the, by the British in Gibraltar. And then following that, a few weeks later, I think, it was the, the British ship was stopped at the Persian Gulf by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. And then the next thing I remember is I was arrested. So I was, I was caught in the middle. And during the interrogation, I, I found out that some of the questions actually is about the, the vessel and then the, the oil tanker, although it had nothing to do with me. I specifically remember one day my uh, chief interrogator just, just came in and then so happy. So you could see the, the, the smile and the grin in his face saying, well, thank you very much, Camille, for uh, the, the, the service that you, you, um, you just gave us and then the, the, the help that you, you, uh, you as a British person. Uh, gave the Islamic Republic of Iran, and I, so I was just, he was very condescendingly, just putting it as a joke, and, and I said, so what, what, what do you mean by this? I said, well, we just got our ship back, and thank you, so you really made a difference. And then at that moment, is, I, I really got it, I think there was a point, there was a point um, to see myself as a dual national, just again, old, rusty story of dual nationals, been, been pictured and, and framed into a whole bigger game which had, they had nothing to do with it. Interrogators know you by, by character. They have studied you before, so they know you uh, weaknesses and, and strength points and uh, when they needed um, to, to um, exert a little bit of extra pressure they will press exactly on the same on that button uh, they already know about and, and that can be private personal professional in many many different ways and is, is very vicious uh, you, you're blindfolded at all times uh, even in the first or second week of your interrogation, and then finally, they, they will they will ease ease it down a little bit. Then you you just basically pushed into a, a room, and then you 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 hear it like the the guards are closing or locking the door, and then someone will just tell you behind the door so you can lift your uh, blindfold. So when you lift it up, I, I, I saw a small room. It was almost like a grave. And you can't walk on it. Uh, you can't uh, do anything apart from either sitting down or standing up or lying. And um, there, is, there is this very strong projectors uh, on, on top of you had 24 hours a day. So it's extremely bright. Uh, and, and really you can't sleep during the night. There is a small window type in your, in your door designed for um, just, just for food. It opens up, there is a hand of a human being, it just comes in with, it, with, with your food and, and perhaps a tea or a, a glass of water. And then that's the only connection that you have to the outside world. Um, so the only lifeline uh, the only entertainment that you have is when you are actually taken out for for interrogation, uh, and and uh, it, it is just so pity because <laughs> the, uh, you you just wish to be interrogated more and more, so because that's the only human contacts that you have. You don't want to go to your cell because because you're terrified and there's all this phobia. Don't don't want to go back over there. And, and it, it it comes to a point that you you start shouting. Your heart is begin to pound and then there's so much of, of like 
uh, phobia of this little place that you, you feel this, there, is, there is no oxygen, there is no air to breathe. And it's not one day, there is not two days, it's not one week, it's not one month, and it just goes on and on and on. And uh, you just becoming, becoming mentally, mentally disabled, insensitive to your, to your, to your environment. And uh, even when they take you for your half an hour, um, fresh air, you're still blindfolded, so you don't, you don't see anything. You, you hear certain things, the wind, the wind is flowing, um, bird is singing, and then you don't see any other human beings, uh, no, no human contacts. That's, that's what the solitary confinement is. I went to court. I again I come to this understanding that the judge had no power over the security services. And a few weeks later, I received uh, nine years and three months. I, with a simple calculation, I, I just realized my my son would be near near to fifteen years old. Uh, so what was I in this ten years in Evin? He would have just been a boy coming to to see me for half an hour every two weeks, or on the phone with like uh, no emotional connection uh, whatsoever. Taking all, all this into account, I come to this decision that um, I, would, I would really need to go, even though it's, uh, it would be very dangerous for me to, to act on it. And, uh, and if I fail, it would, it would be even worse. But then I made the decision and I escaped. But I didn't escape to somewhere that I didn't know. I came back to the place that I also have a sense of belonging to, my big parts of my identity. Um, it's here. Um, I was brought up here. Uh, my intellectual upbringing, um, studying um, in this beautiful multicultural society. So I'm, I'm coming back home to my other home. But I was forced out of a place that I, I felt that I can make a difference. And I, and I feel that what I have done over there was for the good of humanity. I believe um, there is nothing good come out of war and conflict. And um, from both sides, the West or the rest of the world and Iran, there must be a new beginning of a trust building. Now, I think it is a time, and that comes from a, a guy just been just been treated in, in such manner. Uh, it's a time for uh, a dialogue, so we can sit down and talk. There is no any other way. I can't see um, any other way peace ever prevailed uh, unless there's going to be a talk.